I talked a little bit about basketball with game time. Let, let's talk a little bit more basketball. Baylor men are finally back. By the way, congratulations to the ladies on a nice win yesterday, 99-37 over Delaware State, closing out the Farrell Center. We did a little bit of a half eulogy for the Farrell Center uh, in yesterday's show before the ladies played that game. But looking at the men's side of things, they're finally back. It's going to be their first game in, I think, 11 days when they take the court tomorrow in Detroit at Little Caesars Arena, home of the worst team in the NBA, the Detroit Pistons. And they're taking on maybe the most disappointing team in all of college basketball, the Michigan State Spartans. And boy, what a tailspin Michigan State has been on the first month of the season. They started preseason number five in the nation or number four. They were in the top five. And it was actually on the way back from that Bruins game that Drake and I went to, the Bruins and the Stars, where they lost on opening night. Michigan State did to James Madison. Opening night. It's it's not been a good season uh, for Tom Izzo's team. They are already 0-2 in the Big Ten and 4-5 and overall. And if you think, boy, that... That's that's pretty bad for a, a team that started in the top five. It is pretty bad. You're right about that because the, the four and five start, they just lost to Nebraska, by the way. Nebraska, who hasn't won a tournament game ever. That four and five record ties the worst, worst start by a preseason top five team in the last 40 years. Two other teams have done that. Uh, Louisville in 86-87 after they beat a great Duke team with Johnny Dawkins the year before in the title game. And then 2003-2004 Michigan State. So Tom Izzo has been there before and he is maybe the best coach, active coach in all of college basketball. You certainly have two of the top five squaring off against each other in terms of coaches on Saturday in Detroit. So it's been a while since he's been here, but he has been here and that doesn't excuse how bad this has been for Michigan State. I mean, it's just it's just been terrible. Um, they rank 12th in the Big Ten in scoring offense, okay? Which is bad in and of itself. But then I tell you, this is a team that went to the Sweet 16 last year, and they returned 75% of its scoring and its minutes from a year ago. And they're this bad to start the season. So veteran-laden team with, with success, both in the tournament and in the numbers, and they stink. They stink. They're 69th in Ken Palm adjusted offensive efficiency, which is 42 spots lower than where they ended last season. 69th in quote unquote total adjusted offense. They are 73rd. For context, Baylor is second in the nation offensively. I mean, we know Baylor, this is a special team, but. If you're ranked in the top five, which was 15 spots higher than Baylor in the preseason poll, you better be up there in terms of numbers. And they're nowhere close. Nowhere close, man. They do play good defense. They're 16th in adjusted defense, according to Ken Palm. Baylor, we've seen some pretty good defensive stretches this season. They are uh, 42nd, to give you a bit of an analysis there. But, but they're terrible, man. I mean... Uh, inside, outside, they're, they're really bad. They're four and five, and none of those are against the top 60 Ken Palm team. Um, multiple teams ranked, or multiple losses, obviously, to teams out, ranked outside that top 60. So just not good at all. Um, <laughs> one, one writer put it, the Spartans are average inside the arc, terrible outside of it, and are currently projected by Ken Palm to go 10 and 10 in the Big Ten, which is nowhere near the... The, the level of the Big 12, by the way. Um, so it puts their 26th straight tournament appearance in some serious, serious danger six weeks into the season. And we, we we talked about that's a, that's a good benchmark, that six weeks into the season. If you're in the top 12 for the last 20 years, teams in the top 12, or I should say, of the last 20 years, <laughs> the national champion, each one of them, was inside the top 12 in week six. Obviously, Baylor's there. Michigan State is nowhere close. Um, they've needed to go small a lot. One guy to look out for is Malik Hall. Um, he's a 6'8 guy who they've put at center sometimes this year to try and exploit matchups. Um, he's also a guy who can defend a couple different positions, obviously 6'8 long, um, but was a good contributor for them last year. He played 25 minutes a game last year off the bench 
Think about that. I mean, that's I ooh, that I mean, situationally, that's like Jonathan Chamachacho or Jeremy Sohan, who would come in for Flo Thamba, who was the starter in name only. But neither of those guys are playing 25 minutes. This kid was playing 25 minutes off the bench. He's he's starting this year, also playing 25 minutes and averaging 10 and 5 on 47% shooting. So um that's that's pretty good. He's he's been one of the bright spots for them, but they think that sometimes that's going to exploit some mismatches. But Baylor's going to be able to do that on the other end because of the production they have in the paint. You know, a six eight guy. I don't care how old he is. By the way, he's a fifth year senior. He's going to have trouble with Eve Misi. Eve Misi's a unicorn, man. He can he can he can do. He's got all the moves already inside. And you put a six eight guy on him again. I. I don't care if he's 23 and Eve Misi's 18. Eve Misi's going to take him to the rack, man. He really is. And, and Josh Ojanmuna can do it too. And what I've noticed about those two guys specifically, but Baylor as a whole, is you can't isolate those guys. Teams have tried it, especially against Misi, where they'll clear it out and try to isolate him and, and go one-on-one against him and, and feed their big guy in the paint. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Janai Broom of Auburn, who's one of the best big guys in, in the SEC, he couldn't even do it. I don't think Malik Clark's going to do it, although he, it sounds like he's a good player, good contributor, good leader on the team. He's not doing that. Not doing that against Steve Meese. Now, one thing Michigan State really does have going for them is they are very desperate for a win. And Tom Izzo, like I said, is one of the absolute best college basketball coaches still doing it. He's a Hall of Famer. Um, one national championship is probably less than he should have, but always had a ton of respect for, for him and his teams. They always peak at the right time. Um, they're going to need that a little bit earlier this year, or they're going to be in serious trouble of, of missing the tournament, even with the Big Ten not being the strongest conference in America, for sure. But this is this is a good test for Michigan State to, to get a big quad one win, which they only have one of this season, to to knock off a top 10 team and Baylor who's got a, you know, has had a long layoff, has had finals, got to travel up to Detroit. That part kind of plays into Michigan state's hands. Everything in terms of the numbers and the basketball side of things does not, does not. So it's not going to be a great one for the RPI for Baylor in terms of what we thought it was going to be before the season when Michigan state was a top five team, but they could put a hurting on the Spartans and, and really, Show, show the nation that that they are that national championship caliber that we at Baylor definitely think that they are.